welcome everybody to the Cushnet Sawmill. Uh, my name is Mark Rasmussen. I'm president of Buzzards Bay Coalition, and we are very excited today to be announcing a brand new initiative um, that that is aimed directly at getting all of us here who live in this most beautiful South Coast outside and active, exploring our local environment. An initiative called Discover Buzzards Bay. So the fr first, though, I want to tell you a little bit about where you are um, and sort of the the symbolism of being here today. So. About 10 years ago now, 2007, the coalition acquired this property, which was a four acre lumber yard and industrial site. Closed off to the community, gated with a, with a dam that blocked the Acushnet River from passing fish. So a site that was close to the public, this amazingly beautiful location, um, in a neighborhood that desperately needs access to the outdoors. So we acquired this property in order to restore it to its natural state, to remove the dam, to allow fish passage up the river, and to open it to all of you and to everybody who lives in this region. And the response has been amazing. So hundreds of people use this property every week. Um, we didn't stage them. The group that just walked in with a camera club, the father and son who just walked in with a fishing pole, this is the kind of use this site gets every day. And all we had to do was say, it's now available to you. This is just people who are finding this location, finding their own ways to use it. And in the process, which is why we're involved in this, in the process, falling in love with this place and becoming stewards of the environment. So it, it's been a really powerful uh, example for us of how you get people outdoors and how that converts to better environmental protection. Because back about 10 years ago, we started looking at what was happening around the Bay with water quality, loss of conservation land, poorly planned development. And we started looking at the demographics of each town. We did a poll and we found that about 30% of the people in southeastern Massachusetts never use Buzzards Bay or the outdoor environment at all. And at that number is particularly high around Greater New Bedford. We found that nearly half of the people in Greater New Bedford are not getting outside. They're not taking advantage of the local environment. I'm and when I say Buzzards Bay, I don't just mean on the water. I mean it's beaches, it's rivers, it's streams. They're not, they're not taking advantage of our local environment. So from our organization's perspective, we work every day through science, advocacy, and land conservation to protect the bay for future generations, to protect water quality for drinking, for streams, for sailing, for going to the beach, uh, protecting all about this environment here that's so special. Imagine the, the fate of our efforts today if tomorrow's generation doesn't know and love this place. So people take care of what they know, then they know what they use, and so if we're not engaging the public with the outdoors and getting them to find their own ways to engage with the local environment, we're gonna fail as a region, as a community, we're gonna fail at saving Buzzards Bay. So we started saying, what can we do about this? What kind of leverage can we get on this issue? We're not gonna all by ourselves turn a generation of kids away from the TV and get them out into a field or into a stream just by saying that's a good thing to do. So we started offering free programs. We call them Bay Adventures. We started doing them in schools, with families, and with the general public. And we found that we sell out every time we offer uh, programs like Learn to Cohop, Learn how to sw look, learn to fish, uh, walks, yoga events, mindfulness walks, whatever kind of activity we offer, we're not pushing sort of a particular environmental agenda. The agenda is get outside with us, find the way that we're offering to have fun out in the bay, um, and just get outside. The, the demand for this program, we, had a, we did 110 of these things last year um, and a whole range, kayaks, walks, runs, yoga, um, which almost 2,000 people came out because we offered free programs. So if we're seeing that kind of demand, we can't be everywhere to get everybody outside. We figured there's something else, we have to do something else. We have to provide a tool which makes it easy for anybody from their own phone, from their own laptop, to find the places in their community where they can get outside, that are open to the public, that are safe, that have parking, um, and gives them some tips as to how to use the places. So what places are good for launching your boat? Where can you put in a kayak? Where can you actually go for a great walk? What trails are all long enough for a trail run? Um, and we started, we figured we needed to create a tool. So we thought of an idea and we thought of the name Discover Buzzards Bay because we want everybody to discover the bay in their own way. Um, and how can we get this message out into as broad a, a platform as possible? So a web-based tool, what we've created here um, in really in wonderful partnership with South Coast Health is a tool that allows, that lists every outdoor place along the bay. And just like I said, we're talking fishing piers, boat launches, beaches where you can go swimming, ponds, freshwater ponds to fish in, great spots to do surf casting, and, and places where you can find trails. To date, we've loaded 115 of those sites. For the first time ever, a lot of these places 
never sort of made available to the public like this on the web. 115 are now on the website for this program, Discover Buzzards Bay. Along with that is an active weekly calendar of programs. So not just where are these places, but who's offering programs at them. Because we have an amazing wealth of activity in this area that nobody was aware of. So our partners, we now have more than a dozen nonprofit partners who offer outdoor programming. It's folks like the Westport Land Conservation Trust who's here today, the Dartmouth Natural Resources Trust in Dartmouth. Every one of our towns has bird clubs, YMCAs, Audubon Society, Land Trust, who are all offering a mix of programs. Uh, Wareham Land Trust is here today too, that's right. Um, and so we have, they're all offering a mix of programs. This is not about getting people at Buzzards Bay Coalition programs or South Coast Health programs. This is about getting people to any programs. Make it easy for them. Where can they go on a walk? What can they do with their kids? Uh, what are the exciting things happening in their town? So list of places with resources how to use them, active outdoor calendar, and then the last thing is a little bit of curation. So if you're dealing with a population that doesn't often get outside and use the outdoors, we want to do a little bit more to be a little bit more of a guide. So we've come up with a lot of fun blog posts, things like 12 places to go for a walk and buy ice cream. 12 places, how do you learn how to snorkel in the bay? I've never been snorkeling before. What are some tips for snorkeling? Where can you go snowshoeing? Where's a good cross country skiing place? Sort of a little bit of advice too about where, what the bests are so that when people do get outside, they find really great experiences because we want them to come back and do them again and again. So over the next couple of years, because of this partnership with South Coast Health, we're now gonna be building this platform, this Discover Budgets Bay website, to, to grow to at least 300 places. We are aware of 300 of these locations. We only have 115 on the website today. 300 places spanning from Westport to Falmouth and the Elizabeth Islands across the whole region where people can get outside. As we grow with partners, we're gonna be adding more and more partner activities to the site, so the weekly calendar will grow. Um, right now, there are days when you can find that there are four or five things happening in South Coast that you could be outside at. That number is just gonna grow over time as we sort of increase uh, visibility for this. So for us, the point of this whole effort is to get people outside and get them to fall in love with Buzzards Bay like we all have fallen in love with the bay and their local environment. Uh, but there's another important aspect of this. If we've succeeded in getting people away from their TVs and away from their couches, we've got them moving. They're outside now. There's a, there was a natural partnership I, from the beginning of this idea that um, wellness, outdoor activity and wellness was a key sort of natural partner for this idea. And so with amazing support from South Coast Health, we're able to actually launch this effort with them to bring this component of don't just get outside with us, but actually we're gonna give you some tools to actually allow that outdoor experience to affect your health in a really positive way. So I wanted to actually introduce Dr. Robert McGowan from South Coast Health, um, who's gonna sort of help us today. We're gonna to do a walk a little bit later. I'll tell you a little bit of what's gonna happen after the program, but Dr. McGowan on the partnership side. Thanks, Mark. Yep. So um, I am Dr. Robert McGowan. I'm a family uh, I'm actually an intern as primary care physician over in the Wareham region, and I'm glad that uh, Wareham is represented today. Um, sometimes we in Wareham get a little bit self-conscious, you know, we're this kind of this orphan stepchild of this larger South Coast organization, um, but uh, incredibly important part of it. Um, you know, as I was listening to Mark, I was kind of thinking, what the heck am I going to say? And he's saying everything that I wanted to say. So. <laughs> Now I get to think about what I really want to say. But actually, um, the reality is, um, geographically, these two organizations overlap to an amazing degree. They cover, um, the, they cover the entire Buzzards Bay. I actually live in Falmouth, full disclosure, so I have the uh, eastern edge of Buzzards Bay. Um, our office is in Wareham. My in-laws live in South Dartmouth, and my partner, Dr. Gutierrez, lives in, um, in Rhode Island. So we kind of cover the whole range, and South Coast obviously over, overlays much of, of Buzzards Bay. The, the health part of this is, is interesting, because I was kind of thinking, okay, what, what, what is this? Natural resources, health, how does that tie together? And I'm gonna bring up a point, um, something that I talk to a lot of my patients about, and that's the concept of habits. We are amazing creatures of habits. We are so creatures of habit, we don't even realize how much habit drives our daily activity. If we 
spend our day getting up, watching TV, going to work, coming home, sitting down, watching TV. That's what we're going to do. That becomes the way we think. To move out of that habit requires a lot of energy. And sometimes it's just too much work to change the way we, we function. What's the problem with that? Well, you all know the problem with that. Mark was alluding to it. The fact is we have one of the highest, rate, highest uh, rates of diabetes in Fall River in the entire state, in some ways in the entire country. Wareham has one of the highest rates of smoking in, in the entire state, and I see it every day in my practice. So we tend to do what we do. So what becomes important is how do we break habits? How do we break our not so healthy habits, the habits that are leading to disease, and turn them into healthy habits? And the, and the answer is it takes work, it takes energy, but it also takes a path. And if I as a physician have a path that I can help somebody overcome some of those barriers, now we have a way to start a conversation about how do I change my, my attitude? How do I change the way I deal with, with my activity day in and day out? And the reality is, if we want to feel healthier, um, if we want better sleep at night, if we want fewer aches and pains, if we want our blood sugars under better control, the most important thing is staying active and getting active. So, when I thought about this organization, I said, this is it. This is where I can go into my record and at the end of the visit, I can say to my patient, go visit this website. This, go visit Discover Buzzer today. Why? Come back and tell me where your, discover where your buzzer today is. So discover your particular place where you're gonna get out go, it's easy, they've laid it out for you, it's close to your home, you've got 115 locations, just find the one you want and go there. Pick a beautiful day, go take your mile walk, because even that mile walk is going to be helpful for you. It's going to help improve your blood sugar, it's going to bring down your blood pressure. The, I'm going to stop and digress, the treatment of choice, the initial treatment of choice for depression in 2016, it's not a drug, it's exercise. Exercise increases our endorphins, it increases our sense of well-being. You don't need a drug. I like drugs, I prescribe drugs all the time, but at the end of the day, what I want for my patients is to have them heal themselves and not require a medication for anything. That would be the dream. But we need meds for some things and so I can use them, I'm happy to use them, I'm happy to bring down your cholesterol, happy to throw a another diabetic medication, but the idea is that if you do this other approach, if you take a prescription for Discover Buzzards Bay, we can save some of those medicines. We don't need to use some of those medicines. So this is exactly the kind of opportunity that helps us take care of patients and take care of a community in ways that we haven't thought about taking care of communities in the past, taking care of populations. The costs of healthcare are reduced we all know we're facing incredible um, obstacles in terms of the cost of health care. Well, if I can avoid a medication, then we can save health care costs. If I can avoid a hospitalization, I can really avoid, I can really reduce health care costs. If I can avoid a heart attack and all of the attendant costs for that and the emotional costs for that, we can really improve health care and drive down health care costs. So this, these are the types of opportunities we really want. And this is the stuff that we really want to do as, as an organization to really kind of change the way we think about what does it mean to be a care provider for a community. So um, let's go for a walk. If there are other things, there might have been other points that I was supposed to make. If I didn't, somebody will tell me and we'll talk about it at another time. But for now, let's go get exercise and be healthy. This is wonderful. So yes, yeah, so Dr. McGowan and some of our staff who worked on the site, Sarah Quintle was the project manager who helped uh, design the sawmill. Michaela, you're also going to help on the walk? All right, great. Um, so we're going to go for a walk. Anybody who wants to actually check out some of the activities down at the riverfront, there's a sort of a demonstration of the kind of things we do to get kids excited if you want to check out the riverfront. But uh, we're going to go on the walk now, Before north and end. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're <fine. laughs>
open to the public since November November yes we started uh, heavy construction in January 2014 and then did a lot of excavation we completely restored the river channel and put back a lot of fields that were previously asphalt <laughs> concrete um, there were a lot of industrial buildings on the site so one by one we had to take those buildings down and then we created the swamps the fields the woods back again. What's your background? I am a restoration ecologist for the Buzzards Bay Coalition now, but my degrees were in marine biology and then environmental science with a focus in wetlands ecology. So this is our dam overlook. So the dam that got taken out several years ago, that was in this location, but it gives you a nice peek of the uh, impounded part of the river just before it comes over those stairs. Actually, still one cranberry bog 
just north of here. So when um, when the designs were getting done to do the, this first phase of restoration, there's actually still some agriculture that uses some of this water resource as well. So we actually kept the impoundment a little higher because there's still these agricultural needs as well that play in. There's always a myriad of competing uses. So what one person wants to do versus what another person wants to do. When it comes time to, to, to pick your final design and, uh, and go through permitting, there's a lot of people who want to have a, some sort of a say. So whenever we do a big project like this that impacts a large area, it's not just you know one person's house. We're talking you know 20 acres that we intend to open to the public and that involves the stream. So we go through a pretty lengthy process. In this case, we really, you know, we only started thinking about the prop buying property in 1995. And it took us until 2015 to finally say, it's done, <laughs> open up the gates, we're ready to, we're ready for business. Um, it, these, these projects take a long time to, to really flush out and permit and, and then construct and we are very proud of the, the end of result. Yeah. Thank you. Because I'm an ecologist, I notice plants a lot, but this is called winterberry. And it's one of the native plants of the region that we are really making a point of making sure that the native plants dominate this property instead of uh, what we call a lot of uh, aggressive invaders, invasive plants. So we spend a lot of time and energy pulling out the bad ones and making sure that they're replaced with the native plants that, that really are ideal for the wildlife of the region as well. Looks like everything survived the drought. Well, that was a struggle. <laughs> um, we literally had two years of drought in a row uh, during construction when we were trying to get these plants established. All of this wasn't planted. There was field back here, but we did have to do a fair amount of dirt moving. That whole swamp area that I referred to, that was, that was all pavement. So all of that mm. is brand new vegetation. Back here, we still, obviously the trees, um, and patches of, uh, of this field were back here. But up front, closer to the road, that's where <laughs> it took a lot of effort and a lot of uh, sprinklers to get the grass to grow in, a lot of hand watering of those trees. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was not, but two years, last years were not good years for trying to get trees to grow. No. <laughs> Very challenging. So what's the website, Discover Buzzards Bay? So savebuzzardsbay.org is, is our website. And right on the home page, there's a one-click access to Discover Buzzards Bay. You know off the top of your head, anything going on this weekend? No, just go to the website? Yeah. Anyone? Yes. <laughs> Saturday afternoon. Alicia knows. <laughs> okay. There is the photography walk up. What time on Saturday? At 3. 3 p.m. on Saturday? Here. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Right here at the sawmill. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on Sunday, there is a mindfulness walk uh, in Rochester. Do you know okay. which property in Rochester? Eastover. At Eastover Farm. Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Is the land trust leading that walk? Uh, oh, we are. With the land trust. With the Wareham land trust. Very nice. I'm guessing if they type Discover Buzzers Bay and Google, the website's going to come up. Yep. yep. SaveBuzzersBay.org slash discover if you want to direct. Thank you. Yep. SaveBuzzersBay.org slash forward slash discover. How many acres is the whole property? 20 acres. And a very short way away for those who are adventurous enough to want to put a kayak in, um, you can actually kayak the Krishna River up to a next conservation property called La Palm Farm, which is a 46 acre site. Wow. And we're going to take a look. So all the properties are connected by road or river or some waterway, right? Right. So this one we call it is having a blue trail connection. Yep. This is 
our North River Overlook. So it looks like a marsh, uh, and there is marsh, but this is all part of the Aquishna River. And this is a great spot to see things like egrets and great blue herons. Right now there's a lot of Canada geese and mute swans over there. Um, but we do get a lot of really fun species back here. A lot of mallards. Uh, and twice now I've personally seen a bald eagle fly overhead. Pretty cool.